And thank you for joining us. We're here today to talk about the biggest issue facing our state right now. That's health care coverage for nearly one million Floridians. But before we begin, I would like to introduce our speakers of, a, of, of my fellow A Healthy Florida Works Coalition members. Mr. Dan Lindblade, President and CEO of the Greater Fort Lauderdale Chamber of Commerce. Rick Mellon, President of ZHA International in Orlando. Mike Young, a Brevard County resident who is living and working without health care coverage. And Tammy Perdue, who is General Counsel of Associated Industries of Florida. I would also like to recognize several other business associations and Chambers of Commerce members who are with us here today. Lance Lozano and Karen Phillips with the Florida United Business Association. Marcia Gedke, President of the Titusville Chamber of Commerce. Jim Cameron, Vice President of, of Government Relations at the Daytona Regional Chamber of Commerce. Dave Miller, President and CEO of the Chamber of Southwest Florida. Rosa Brito, President of the South Day Chamber of Commerce. Arturo Anamadora, President of the Honduran American Chamber of Commerce. Lyle Arraya, Vice President of the Nicaraguan Chamber of Commerce. Connie Palomo, Executive Director of the Salvadorian Chamber of Commerce. My good friend Fabio Andrade, President of the America Business Network. And Henry Lim, who's the Director of the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce of Metro Orlando. We also have several of our coalition business members with us, including Graham DeMont with De DeMont Insurance in Tallahassee and Jack Brill with Metz Culinary, Cul Culinary in Sarasota. Last but certainly not least, I'd like to thank our Senate President, Andy Gardner, for joining us here today. We are honored to have you here along with Senator Beam, uh, Senator Galvano, Senator Garcia, and Senator Richter. And now, my name is Julio Fuentes, and I am the President CEO of the Florida State Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. We are the only statewide economic development organization serving the needs of our Hispanic community. We currently have 38 chapters here in Florida, and we work with more than 80,000 minority-owned businesses. I speak to business owners and leaders of local chambers of commerce every day, and I consistently hear their concerns about health care coverage in our state. That's because Florida is in the midst of a health care crisis. Our state has one of the highest rates of uninsured people in this nation. This affects our businesses, our families, and all Floridians, whether they have health care coverage or they do not. Business owners are suffering from rising health insurance premiums, and communities are struggling to care for their uninsured neighbors. Florida's business community has called on the legislature to address these issues and develop solutions. Thankfully, the Florida Senate has heard our message loud and clear. The Florida Senate, under the strong leadership of President Andy Gardner, has put together a comprehensive health care package that would create the Florida Health Insurance Affordability Exchange, otherwise known as the FIX program. This is, this is the solution Florida's business community has been looking for. The FIX program is not an expansion of Medicaid. It is a free market approach that would utilize private health insurance plans to increase access to health care coverage to 800,000 Floridians. It encourages personal accountability through minimal monthly premiums and jobs and education training requirements for all its participants. The funding for the FIX program already exists. We've already paid for it. We have sent billions of our taxpayer dollars up to Washington, D.C., and we want to bring that money right back here to our state, Florida. Right now, there are 28 states have, that have drawn down the available funded, funding and extended health care coverage to their uninsured. Many of these states crafted plans similar to the fixed proposal. If they can partner with the federal government and create a program that works for their state, then Florida can absolutely do the same. President Gardner and the Senate have come up with a good plan. Now it's time for the House to come, sit down at the negotiating table, and work with the Senate to produce a plan we can take to D.C. Florida's businesses and the 800,000 people who could be covered simply cannot afford to wait any longer. And I am grateful to the Florida Senate and, and President Gardner for their bold leadership and commitment to doing what is absolutely right for our state, our businesses 
and our economy. And now I'd like to turn the podium over to my colleague, Mr. Dan Lindblade, the President and CEO of the Greater Fort Lauderdale Chamber of Commerce. Thank you, Julio. Well spoken. It gives me a great deal of pleasure to be up here today. Left Fort Lauderdale at 4.45 this morning to make the trek up here to support the Senate and President Andy Gardner and their comprehensive health care plan. My name's Dan Lindblade. I'm President and CEO of one of the largest chambers in Southeast Florida. We've been in business since 1910, 104 years serving over 2,000 companies representing half a million employees in Broward County, Florida. As a result of hardworking Floridians and the fall into the health care coverage gap, when these individuals are forced to seek care they cannot afford, the cost gets shifted to insured Floridians and businesses in the form of a hidden tax that drives up health insurance premiums around 8% or $1,200 a year. The cost for uncompensated care in our state is through the roof. In fact, in 2013, it totaled nearly $3 billion. Think about that, $3 billion that companies could use to reinvest in their community, to expand and create new jobs, and to keep jobs that they have right now. Not only are our businesses shouldering the cost of uncompensated care in our state, but as of January 1st, Federal employer mandates kicked in, and many businesses will face financial penalties if they do not provide health care coverage to full-time employees and their dependents. It is estimated that these mandates will cost Florida businesses as much as $253 million a year in tax penalties. Being a former Chamber of Commerce executive himself, President Gardner understands what this means for businesses and how important it is that we take action to help employers now, especially small business owners, which make up the lion's share of our chamber membership. He and the Florida Senate have shown tremendous leadership by putting politics aside and doing what is needed to address our state's health care crisis. I speak on behalf of 30 local chambers, representing almost 1.8 million people in Broward County and throughout the state, and we say a healthy Florida works is the way to do it. We appreciate the willingness that they have taken a stand on this in the Senate, especially the leadership of President Gardner. Now I'd like to introduce Rick Mellon, president of ZHA International and a fellow member of a healthy Florida works coalition. Thank you, Dan. And everyone being here, it's a true honor to be representing the over 800 businesses that are part of a Healthy Florida Works. And my personal um, thanks to the Senate President, Mr. Uh, Andy Gardner, and his colleagues here that have had the leadership to move forward on a program that's incredibly important to business people around the state. I own a business with 13 people. It's service industry business, and people are the only thing that make us successful. Without people, without them being healthy and taken care of, my business would not survive. As a result of that, we do provide 100% medical coverage for our, our, our people, but not every business is able to do that. Um, and it's getting harder for everyone to do it because of the cost of uncompensated care and cost shifting that comes with that. We've managed to, to deal with that over the years, and hopefully with the efforts of the FIX program, we'll continue to be able to do that for our employees. But you know, everyone hears a lot of numbers and, and um, statistics, but let me put it in the real world. I went to the doctor yesterday and had a, an appointment, which is a $30 appointment. When I got my bill, I actually paid $8.59. That was a result because I have pretty decent uh, health care insurance. But if I don't have health care insurance, and, and more importantly, if I am not covered through any other program, the program that FIX is here to, to address, one of three things is going to happen. That individual is going to go to a doctor and pay $30, which is a fairly large chunk of income for the, the amount of revenue, income they'd be getting on a monthly basis. Number two, they're going to go to the hospital, and the hospital's not going to get paid, and there's going to be a charge of $150 to $300 that's going to be borne by the hospital. Or number three, the worst of them all, is he does nothing in, in that uh, situation that medical appointment could have prevented, gets worse over time. 
Every one of those things address, addresses and hurts us as, as business owners because it increases the cost of insurance. And we want to provide insurance. Not everyone would like to do it, but it has to be affordable. And the only way to make it affordable is to make it as universal as possible. And again, the, the program that, that uh, the senators behind me have, have put forward is capable of doing that. And as a business owner, I, I would urge our House leaders and, and actually implore them to do the right thing, which is, is you came to Tallahassee to provide leadership. You're, you're elected to do that. And leadership means you address big issues that are um, in front of the, the, the business and, and state of Florida. This is one of those issues. And as a businessman, this is not a political issue to me. I, I, I don't care whether it's Republican or Democrat. This is a business issue. It's one that affects us on a day-to-day -day basis and affects our viability year to year. But for others that don't have the benefit of insurance and following these gaps, it's much more personal. And doing nothing to solve this issue is unacceptable. It is absolutely unacceptable because we've got over 800,000 people that are making in the neighborhood of $16,000 who cannot afford to pay for insurance which might cost seven, $800 a month. They can't afford to pay for a $30, $50, $100 a visit doctor bill without giving up other things. So this is the right thing to do. I urge our house to do the right thing. And I'm going to uh, introduce Mike Young from Bavard, who's uh, the hardworking flirting here that has uh, been dealing with this issue personally. My name's Mike Young, and I live in Brevard County, and I'm in the Gap. I work hard every day, and uh, I take serious issues with politicians who think I don't work hard or that this plan is a handout. I may not make a lot of money, but maintenance is what I do and what I know, and I want to keep working and, and staying healthy. I don't want a handout. I pay taxes just like everyone else, and I know that money goes to Washington, and I know we should get it back. Thank you to the senators who understand working Floridians. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Tammy Perdue. I'm general counsel of Associated Industries of Florida. We're known as the voice of Florida business, and we've represented Florida's employers since 1920. Health care coverage is undoubtedly one of the most critical issues facing our state today and we've taken a strong leadership role on this issue. The reason why is because a healthy and productive workforce is probably the most important asset that any business has to be able to rely on every single day. So knowing that all working Floridians have access to health care is on the minds of more and more employers each day. As you've already heard today, Florida business owners are struggling with the rising cost of providing health insurance to employees and their families. And quite frankly, the federal health care law and its evolution since it passed five years ago has brought a lot of questions for Florida businesses. Those are questions that need Florida answers. AIF has been on a mission to work with as many business and policy leaders as we can find to develop the best solutions for our state. With our colleagues here and a Healthy Florida Works, we've consistently advocated for a Florida-designed, free market, consumer choice, health care reformed system rather than a draconian and bureaucratic one-size-fits-all federal scheme being imposed on us. And we find ourselves here today supporting the work of the Florida Senate that uses the private sector's innovation and creativity to harness available federal funds, tax dollars, that businesses have already paid and bring those back to allow more Floridians to access better health care. We also believe in protecting Florida taxpayers. The Senate's fixed proposal does just that. If the federal government were to back away from their commitment to our state, this program will expire and Florida taxpayers will not be left to foot this bill. Senate President Andy Gardner has gone to bat for Florida's business community this session. The Senate's proposal is not just blind acceptance of expanding federal government's hold on our state. Instead, it's a free market, private sector driven, consumer choice, bipartisan, Florida-based health care reform plan that will have a profound and meaningful impact on the lives of hardworking Floridians. These are the men and women who make up the workforce asset 
that we boldly boast about when we tell companies that our state is open for business and we urge them to locate and expand here. President Gardner understands how critically important it is that Florida get this right for our businesses and our citizens, but he can't do it alone. We need the Florida House to join him these last 18 days of session, join him on this quest to find coverage for the working uninsured, to save businesses in our state billions of dollars in annual health care costs, to spur job creation, and to keep Florida's economic engine running smoothly. Thank you, President Gardner, for your leadership, for your demonstrated commitment, and your hard work. A healthy Florida Works remains committed to your work, your vision. AIF remains committed to you, and Speaker Feeney remains remains committed to you as well. With that, I would like to ask President Gardner to come to the podium and share a few remarks with us. Well, uh, I, will, uh, I will be brief, but um, I, want to, uh, I want to thank Associated Industries of Florida a lot of us were former House members and had the honor of serving with Speaker Feeney, Tom Feeney. And if you put conservative credentials laid out on this table, the person that would come out with the most conservative credentials is probably Tom Feeney. And for Tom and Associated Industries of Florida, the group that I consider to be the business leader here in Tallahassee, to stand up and say, this is something we need to do, is very humbling and shows a tremendous amount of leadership. This journey that we are on uh, didn't necessarily happen overnight. The reality is it happened a year ago when the federal government approved the low income pool for one year. And they made it very clear that they were not going to allow the existing program to continue. And so at that time, you would think that we would start looking at other ideas, negotiate other ideas on how to get the lip pool resolved and maybe have uncompensated care and uninsured covered. Uh, but sadly, we came into session with none of that done. I'm very proud of the Senate. This isn't necessarily my idea. This is a Senate idea, and this is your idea. It's looking at a problem, looking at a problem, and not just saying, no, we're not doing that. No, we're not going to take federal money. Granted, 30% of our budget is federal money, but no, we're not doing that. But looking at a problem and saying, you know what? We will sit at the table and we will negotiate and we will talk to anybody at any time about how we handle a free market approach to expansion. I stand here and some may say, well, is the Senate serious about this? I want to introduce here's, who's here with me. My appropriations chairman, Tom Lee, he has a checkbook. My health policy chairman, Aaron Bean, my majority leader, Bill Galvano, my president pro tem, Gary Richter, and Senator Garcia, really the architect of putting this together. And to be quite honest, I'm just a travel agent for Garrett and Renee. <laughs> <laughs> but we are prepared to have the debate. Today on the floor, we had a completely separate issue that at times was contentious. But I said something today that Jeff Atwater said when we were in the Senate, he said, don't fear the debate. No is not a solution. President Gates once said, health, you know, no is not a health care policy. But we stand here with you, and we stand here to address this issue. Lip as we know it is going to change, and lip as we know it is going away. We better have a solution to fill the problem that's going to come with that. And you have a friend in the Florida Senate and we will do everything we can to get this issue resolved. Thank you for having us today, and thank you for your continued support. Thank you. Well, this concludes this press conference, and thank you all for, for coming. And uh, once again, thank you to our Senate President, uh, Andy Gardner, and his colleagues standing behind me. Thank you.